Solomon pleased God greatly when he asked for a wise and understanding heart. Uh, somebody that's wise and understanding is able to make good judgments. And part of that is being able to evaluate things properly. Assigning a proper value to everything around us. It's not as easy as one might think. Uh, <clears throat> now... The Catholic faith is that treasure in the field. That's one way to read this gospel passage. The pearl of great price is the totality of our Catholic faith, which is of more value than anything else in this world. It is the clearest picture we have of reality of the true state of affairs. It's reality therapy, I like to call it. And I coined that term. I want a nickel if anybody says it. Reality therapy. This Catholic faith of ours is so awesome. It resolves the problem of evil in the world. The whole of the faith, the whole of our Catholic faith is a response to the problem of evil. The main objection to the existence of God. Our Catholic faith shows us the true path to walk in this life. God has revealed to us what is truly good and fulfilling for us. There are so many things we can say about our Catholic faith. When we start to elucidate it, we see how valuable it is. Extreme value. If anybody offered us anything in this world, any amount of money, would we accept it? If we had to renounce our faith, would we trade our faith for anything else? When we consider... What our faith brings us, our Catholic faith. That would be a fool who would do such a thing. And here's a great story about a fool to illustrate this. This is a great old story. I don't know if it's Hans Christian Andersen. I don't know who, where the story originated, but I think it came from the Middle Ages. Lucky Jack, all right, or Hans. The one I read on the internet was Hans. And so uh, it's like a young guy who goes to a faraway land, leaves his home, and <clears throat> goes to work, like learning a trade. And he has this master who teaches him, and they make an agreement for seven years. So he works hard for seven years serving this guy, and he does very well. And after the seven years are up, he says, I'd like to go home to my family now. I'd like to settle up with you. So the guy's like, certainly you did a great job. And here's your reward for all your hard work. And he hands him a big lump of gold as big as his head. Seems a little lavish. Uh, it's like a fortune. But that's the story. Now a lump of lead as big as our head bigger than our head okay i would imagine you need a wheelbarrow uh to carry that thing but uh, this kid wraps it in his napkin slings it over his shoulder starts humping it down the road and he's like really getting exhausted quickly he's dog dead dog tired and a guy comes flying by on a horse and uh stops and chats him up he says what you got there what are you lugging it looks heavy he's like yeah it's a big lump of gold He's like, well, man, you're getting really tired. <clears throat> you're going to be able to make it? And uh, the guy offers him his horse. He says, you know, this is so easy. You just sit here and then let the horse do all the work. So if you want, I'll trade you that lump of gold. You can have the horse. And uh, the Hans says, agrees joyfully, hands over his lump of gold, gets on the horse, takes off. The horse throws him off, though. And he's laying there on the ground, dazed with his horse standing next to him. And... Guy comes walking down the road leading a cow. And the guy convinces him, hey, you know, if you want, I'll tell you, I, I see that, that that horse is a piece of work. He threw you off, huh? Well, I'll tell you, this cow right here uh, is much more versatile than that horse. You can get all kinds of butter and cheese and milk out of this cow. It's a real gentle animal. Uh, so, yeah, why don't we make a little trade? I'm, I'm just to help, out, to help you out. And Hans is like, yeah, sure, great. So happy how everybody's being so neighborly to him. He trades out the horse for the cow. 
And then it goes on from there. He ends up trading the cow for a pig and the pig for a goose and the goose for a whetstone at the end. Finally, he's on his way home. He said, what am I doing with this dumb stone? Throws it into a pond or a well or something like that. And he goes home with nothing. That's what happens when we lose that sense of appreciation of the treasure we have, the pearl of great price in the Catholic faith. To walk away from that, to neglect it, not avail ourselves of it. What a tremendous poverty and what tremendous folly to do so. To squander this treasure when we're sitting on Fort Knox with our Catholic faith. The one true religion on the face of the earth that corresponds most completely with the true state of affairs, what is truly the case in reality. Salvation is from the Jews, our Lord said, and we're part of this pure stream fount of revelation, the fullness of the means of sanctification and grace given to the human race in our Catholic faith. And sadly, so many people sell off for something else, sell out their Catholic faith because they don't see the value in it. So I want to go through a few things here that I think will illustrate of what value it is to help us appreciate it to it, appreciate it and pay all the more attention to it. First of all, our Catholic faith is a treasure because it provides meaning for our lives. And that's what people want deep down. That's what's really, truly gratifying and sustaining for our lives. Meaning. There is a crisis of meaning in our world. Yeah, we have all kinds of knowledge. Tremendous knowledge. Knowledge doesn't save us, though. Faith does. Faith is something received as a gift. And it gives meaning a ground for our whole existence in order to understand our world and have this comprehensive worldview that gives the world meaning so that we know where we came from, where we're going, what we're supposed to be doing in the meantime, before we have that kind of understanding and that broad comprehensive vision, we first have to stand. When we receive the gift of our Catholic faith, and we say, amen, like in a minute, we're going to profess our faith and we're going to say, amen. When we say that, I stick myself to this. I stand on this. We receive that gift of our Catholic faith. And now we have a standing and we're grounded and we begin to understand. And the world takes on meaning, is infused into it, a meaning the world cannot give us. And a joy the world cannot give us that flows from that meaning. We have hope. A hope to withstand any of the trials that come downrange in this life. We can get through them. As we know from that second reading today from Romans chapter 8. All things work for good for those who trust in the Lord. Okay, He's going to turn everything. He's going to write straight with crooked lines. He's going to get us through every single trial of our life. And it's only a limited amount of suffering. Temporary suffering for an infinite amount of blessedness. Not only does our hope sustain us in this life. We have the hope of the next. To sustain us in this life. The thought that we're headed towards you eternal blessedness with God, perfect joy, no suffering, all our wounds healed perfectly. You won't even remember your pain. Our Lord says it'll be like a woman in travail after she has her child, when she's holding her child in her arms, she no longer remembers the pain of the delivery for the joy that this child has been brought into the world. You won't remember any of it. You won't call it to mind even what you endured down here when you have this perfect joy and peace forever. You will ask nothing of me on that day. All your questions will be answered. You will have total peace forever. 
That's what we're living for and towards eternal blessedness. And God exists, we learn from our Catholic faith. And that he's not just some kind of like cold, cerebral, calculating geometry that rules the universe. That God is love. That that's his very nature to love. And that he made us to love on us. That's all he wants to do. The best corollary I can think of is, you know, my cat, uh, well, he died. Um, I had a cat up until a couple months ago, Francis. Got hit by a car. Anyway, look, um, six years I had this cat. He was so dang cute. He would sleep on my chair, curled up, and I just couldn't. He was irresistible. I'd look over and see him curled up there. He'd open one eye and look at me, you know, and I just couldn't resist. I had to love on him. And, you know, everybody, I'm not going to imitate how I talk to my cat. You know, we all talk funny to our pets, you know. Safe. It's like baby talk or something, you know, to, a, to an animal. I do it too. I'm not going to do it though, right now. But I pet on him, love on him. He was so dang cute, you know. He was just such a great, my little buddy. God's the same way. Like, he can't resist us. We are irresistible to him. All he wants to do is love us. It's his nature. He, he has to love. It's just the way he is from all eternity. Uh, God is love. Not just mere thought, calculating reason. God is love. That's what our Catholic faith teaches us. And that he loves us infinitely. And that we have such true value, dignity, and worth. It's unimaginable dignity, value, and worth. How much more value is a man than a sheep? Our Lord says, you are of more worth than many sparrows, our Lord says, more value, many sparrows. We have so much value ourselves and we don't see it. Our Catholic faith tells us of what supreme value each of us has. If God had to choose between us and the whole physical universe. Even just one of us, let's just say you're the only person in the physical universe made in the image and likeness of God. Think about this when you're laying in bed tonight. Think, yeah, what if it was just me all alone in the cosmos laying there? And God had to choose between you and the whole physical universe and everything in it. He would choose you every day of the week and twice on Sunday. No questions asked. That's how much value, dignity, and worth each of us has. He doesn't care about how big the cosmos is. I know we feel puny. You start thinking about it. You're like, man, I just, I'm a little speck of dust down here. God, that doesn't matter to God. We have something the universe doesn't have, the physical universe. It has an expiration date. We don't. We are incorruptible and immortal. As a result of this soul that we have, we have something in us that is not part of the physical universe. It has no expiration date. That gives us a dignity, value, and worth. It's unimaginable. We are literally noble. We are now made brothers and sisters of Christ and part of the family of God. His name is given to us in baptism. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit inscribed indelibly into our soul so that we share the family name and we're in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We share the family name. We're part of the family of God. We receive that through our Catholic faith. The awesomeness of who each and every single one of us is. Mountains which over all us are but tiny grains of sand compared to our hearts. One of my favorite authors, spiritual authors, Jean-Pierre de Cossade, 17th century Jesuit, said that. Cardinal Ratzinger, before he was Pope Benedict, said this in a book he wrote. A man's heart, with its ability to love, is greater than all the Milky Ways in the universe. Because we're made in the image and likeness of God, and therefore we are called to love should call forth a tremendous amazement at ourselves 
And that is good news. So much so, St. John Paul II, Pope St. John Paul II, in his first worldwide letter to the Universal Church, his first encyclical, he wrote on Christ and the redemption. It was called Redemptor Hominus. And in paragraph 10, he says this, one of my favorite quotes. The name for that deep amazement at man's worth and dignity is the gospel. That is to say, the good news. Because that's the underlying presupposition. It's kind of like the underlying premise to all of salvation history. It's like, why did God go to all this trouble to get involved with us and do all this stuff and all this? Kind of take it for granted. Because of our worth and dignity and value. Because of his great love for us. That it is also called Christianity, St. John Paul says. That deep amazement at man's worth and dignity. It's the gospel. It's the good news. It's literally Christianity, he says. To find out who we are. We don't know who we are. Our Catholic faith tells us who we are. God tells us who we are. That's what we receive in our Catholic faith. So many things we can talk about. Just a few more. Hey, you got involved with us in salvation history. Do we take that for granted? He got involved with us. But he even cares. He's not a divine clockmaker. He got involved with us. And all these saving events, we celebrate them in the liturgical year, in the sacraments, in the liturgy of the church. We enter into these saving events and become part of it. We have liturgical worship as part of our Catholic faith that feels so good. We enter into it physically with our voice, with our gestures, with our presence. What a tremendous gift. We get involved in salvation history in and through the liturgies of the church. We have these channels of grace that the Son of God gave us, instituted. We call them sacraments, of which there are seven channels of grace the Son of God left for us to channel grace into our lives. What a poverty if we don't see the value in them and we don't avail ourselves of them. What a poverty. We study His Word, the Word of God and sacred tradition. Both constitute the Word of God. There's a woman specially chosen by God. Her statue standing behind me who has a special solicitude for each one of us. We discover through our Catholic faith that we have a heavenly mother who's always praying for us and cares about our well-being, every single individual one of us. And then we also have a guardian angel we learn this, discover this astounding fact. Matthew 18, 10, do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven, their angels always behold the face of my heavenly father. Every single one of us, even the little ones, our Lord says, have an angel with them all the time who is beholding the face of God continuously. Who's with us, a sign to guard us. And there's an entire cloud of witnesses cheering us on on the other side. We learn this from our Catholic faith. There's a finish line for every single one of us when we cross over into eternity. And there's a whole team, our team, those who've crossed over. We just are the ones who happen to be walking around right now. Everybody else is on the other side. They're cheering us on. They're our cheerleaders. We learn this from our Catholic faith, the solidarity we have in the fellowship of the family of God. We know who we are and where we belong. We truly belong somewhere. We discover friendship with God in a spiritual life, a God who has no limitations. He can attend to each and every one of us like we were the only one. Give us undivided 100% of his attention to each one of us. Everybody on the whole planet all at once without a struggle. Because he's not restricted by anything, any limitations. But we have access to the Supreme Being. 
who is love. 24-7, 365, anytime we want. The presence of God is available to us and his friendship, guiding, supporting, comforting us, guiding us. The awesomeness of what the spiritual life is, the life of prayer. The adventure of the spiritual life. We receive this through the gift of our Catholic faith. It's a treasure of inestimable worth. What supreme folly to walk away from it, to undervalue it. If we're smart, if we're wise, if we're truly understanding, we'll sell everything and buy that field. 